What's up, y'all? You're here with WWE superstar Kofi Kingston on Mirror.co.uk. Kofi, what's the question you're always asked first by journalists? The first question, uh, probably how did my career start? Uh, well, that was yeah. the second question. Oh, is that it? Yeah. So, so, how did you get into wrestling after graduating with a degree in communications? You know, um, wrestling is something that I've always wanted to do uh, in my heart. Growing up, you know, everyone has their childhood dream. Wrestling was my childhood dream, especially WWE, particularly. Um, I, that was really what, what I watched the most. Um, but, you know, you kind of fall into a. I don't want to say trap, but a routine where everyone is kind of doing one thing. You know, you're expected to, to graduate high school. You know, you go to college, you graduate college, you get your degree, you go into the workforce, you climb up the corporate ladder and, and you know, eventually retire with your family and kids. You know, it's the standard, uh, standard procedure. And I just kind of fell into that same routine, knowing in my heart that's not what I wanted to do. So I just, uh, one day, just, just, you know, decided I would give it a shot. So you followed your dream? Just decided to follow my dream, yes. And you were a wrestling fan as a kid, but I believe you also played football. Was there any right. kind of tension between what, which way you could go down, or was it always wrestling? No, I think it was, uh, it was always wrestling. Uh, football, I, was re you know, I really wasn't a, a big guy, you know. Uh, so, um, and, and in college, I played sports recreationally. Uh, but I would always watch you know, WWE every year. I would stay loyal to that no matter what. But um, yeah, if, if I'd probably say WWE and, and wrestling were the sports that I would, you know, that I, that I stayed consistent with. And what kind of uh, WWE superstars were you a fan of as a, a kid? And what particular matches do you remember that stood mm. out? What really hooked you in? I, really, the the whole entertainment factor and um, the way the glitz, the glamour, you know, uh, the fireworks. I actually never got to to go to a live WWE event until. I think my senior year in high school or junior year in high school. So it was something where I had to save up my own money because my parents didn't, you know, they didn't buy me tickets and take the whole family to the show. I would have to watch, you know, every Saturday morning, particularly, um, you know, I would watch and get hooked with all the storylines and everything. And then I wouldn't be able to watch the pay-per-view because my parents wouldn't buy it. You know, <laughs> none of the kids around would, would buy it either. So um, it was all, it, it always left me wanting more and I could never actually get the, the full, you know, the full effect that I would hear about what happened, but uh, never get to really witness it, the, the culmination as it actually happened. And was there any particular superstar that really hooked you or inspired you at all? Yeah, yeah, there were, there were several. And it, you know, I get asked who my favorite wrestler is, and it, and it changes every day. It's, it <laughs> changes with every interview. I mean, um, last interview I said Ricky the Dragon Steamboat just because um, he's, you know, he's a martial artist and also a high flyer. So I like to throw a lot of kicks and, and jump off the ropes. But, you know, there are other guys who I love to watch, too. The Bret Hart's, the Owen Hart's, you know, I didn't, I, I never, uh, I, I love to hate Owen Hart, you know. And even, like, looking back at his matches, now, he would do so many little things. He would, he would tie up with you and break the tie up and raise his hands in victory as if he won. I'm like, oh, gee, you know, this guy, you know, who does he think he is? But he, he was awesome to watch, and um, I just, I, I definitely look at his matches and kind of study them and, Okay, okay. Kind of breaking my own. And uh, have you been, or are you still now, a fan of any, a fan of any other kind of styles of promotions at all back in the day? Or yeah, you, um, you in terms of sports events or uh, were you wrestling? Any, uh, wrestling. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I'm a, I'm a fan of all wrestling. I'm a fan of all wrestling. Um, I watch a lot of uh, like the Japanese style mm -hmm. wrestling, which is, and, and even even like old European oh, wrestling. Really? Yeah, you know, uh, it's. It's just a different, uh, a different style than, than the American style. Um, I usually just try to watch all the wrestling I can and take bits and pieces here, and then you know, if there's something I feel like I can use, I go ahead and try to incorporate that. It's very interesting you mentioned the old uh, European style because you've worked extensively with uh, grappling veterans like William Regal and yes. Finlay, and also right. Chris Jericho. So what, what are the kind of key lessons that you've learned with them when working in the ring? It's, uh, to, to, you know what, to, to really uh, to have fun. Uh, okay. While you're in there, you know, um, when I was, I mean, I guess I'm still a rookie, but earlier in my career, I would be so, just so nervous. And it might, might not have showed out there, but, you know, worried about, uh, like, where I needed to be and, and what was going on and what was coming next. What do I have to do? Uh, whereas now it's really just kind of laid back and you kind of see what happens, you know, taking your time and, um, and really taking in the moment. Because you know this doesn't last forever. Um, but... 
you know, kind of kind of live in the moment and uh, and enjoy it while it does last. Well, since your debut, you've been one of the most fluid movers in the ring. So now you've oh. just got to enjoy that as as you go along. Right, right. So uh, your Jamaican persona, if I may say so, right. predates your WWE days. Uh, sure. Um, are you at one point known as the angry Jamaican. See, Did yeah. you wrestle as a bad guy at all? Or? Yes, yes, I was, uh, you know, and that's actually, uh, I know that's on Wikipedia, but it, it's in an article that's actually a misquote. Okay. Um, I, I was not the angry Jamaican, I was an angry Jamaican. Okay. That was the character, okay. you know, so it was... That uh, wasn't your subtitle or anything. Right, no, okay. yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, it's still the same Kofi Kingston, uh, actually Kofi Nahaje Kingston mm -hmm. back in the days, but, um, I, you know, it was just kind of like the opposite character. It was... Uh, kind of like a Ludwig Borga, uh, where, you know, I'd go out and just insult the United States yeah. and, and whatnot. So it was, it was definitely a lot of fun. A lot, definitely a lot Ludwig of fun. Borga and Owen Hart. So this is about 1993, 94 you started watching. Well, no, I, I started watching probably, uh, I mean, I've watched for as long as I can remember, probably late, late 80s, mm -hmm. but my, my, most of my memories come from the 90s, mm -hmm. yeah. That kind of period. So what, what kind of effect on your career do you think it would have if you weren't billed as hailing from Jamaica, if that wasn't your hook, as mm -hmm. it were, if the hook was more your high-flying style and your kicks, right. um, you're just as a worker, how, what kind of effect do you think that would have on your career? Um, it, I, I don't think it matters what they bill you as, to be honest. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, the, you know, people, they question my heritage and whether you know, I'm playing a character or not. But at the same time, uh, I think what people enjoy about me, it's not the fact that, oh, this is a Jamaican guy. Yes, I want to cheer for him. It's really that I'm out there and um, I'm doing, you know, things that they, they've never seen before. You know, I'm out there and I'm, I'm smiling. I'm having a good time. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, just, just a little, little unorthodox, you know, something that, uh, something, something new and fresh. Okay. So as long as you've been working in wrestling, who have you learned from most? Who would you credit most uh, as a trainer or uh, as a... As someone you're working with in the ring, mm -hmm. uh, uh, both in ring and out of the ring, who would you credit? Well, I'll start with out of the ring. Uh, we have a lot of different uh, agents that, that help us uh, with our matches and they give us pointers. And um, I, again, I'd say I, R Ricky Steamboat, um, Arn Anderson, even Fit, um, they, they, they all just, everyone has a different flavor. and. Uh, one person might like one thing about a match and the other person might hate the exact same thing. So it's, uh, it, it's definitely uh, it, it's, it's awesome to have them back there because uh, these are the guys that we grew up watching. And now they have given back to the, the, the industry of professional wrestling and um, the WWE mm -hmm. in staying here and helping us young guys out. So. And yeah. so when you, uh, when you travel the world with WWE, who do you tend to hang out with? Who are your travel buddies? Uh, right now, uh, I travel with uh, with CM Punk, and uh, he and I have been uh, been travel buddies for the past I don't know six to eight months. Mm -hmm. Actually, right around the time when we uh, when we won the uh, the world tag titles yeah. uh, about about I don't know seven months ago or so. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he's and he's also another guy that I've learned a lot from because he's he's been with WWE. He's been involved in the world of professional wrestling for a long time and you know he's a young guy but he knows a lot so he's another another uh, good source to have I'm trying to get some party stories out of you there but you're yeah <laughs> you're <laughs> we're, not we're, not, we're not the party is that man we we're, we're actually quite boring you know um I, you know people go to bars and all this we're just kind of like the old men you know <laughs> we just kind of go ho go go to the hotel room you know watch a, a little bit of wrestling on youtube and you know well, poke a little a, fun at each other. On YouTube. That's illegal for a start, but there you go. Well, the le watch legal wrestling <laughs> on YouTube, of course. So of course. Um, for this year's Money in the Bank match at yeah. WrestleMania, you were seen as a strong contender to win. How do you cope with the pressure uh, of the, with a match like that where there's so much quality for expectation of match quality? And how do you feel you performed? I, I actually uh, I felt that I performed all right. You know, my goal was to go in there. And Money in the Bank is such a difficult match. You have eight different guys uh, all trying to to climb that ladder and um, and and win. You know, it's a heavyweight title shot at a time of your choosing, which is at stake. Um, my goal was to go out there and you know, well, obviously try and win the Money in the Bank ladder match, but also put on a great show. If I you know do do things that that I've never seen done. Um, and and really uh, make people believe, mm -hmm. you know, uh, show people that I that I did deserve to be there, and um, add to the match, um, 
athletically, mm -hmm. you know. Well, the, every observer I've come across seems to think you've acquitted yourself wonderfully. So. Oh, thank you. And I think this is probably the last question now. Mm -hmm. um, I read that you were previously a part of a step dancing group called Sexual Chocolate. That's right, um, that's right. I don't know what step dancing is. What, step what kind of people do you perform a sexual chocolate dance to? It's actually, uh, Sexual Chocolate was, uh, was a... Uh, I don't want to say fraternity because I, you know, I went to Boston College and it's a mm -hmm. Jesuit school, so the fraternities are not allowed. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, in traditional um, in, in black colleges, they do uh, they have fraternities that do step. Okay. Um, and if you've ever seen, uh, it's kind of a combination of of stomp and uh, you know maybe like an Irish jig. Yeah, that's the kind of the a closest thing I can a, a river dance. Yeah, yeah, kind of like that. But you know, we all. Um, there's a group of us that coordinate different stomps, claps, and sounds to music, or maybe not to music, and uh, again, just, just seeking to entertain. So, uh, well, maybe that yeah. can feed into your character more in the future. Actually. Yeah, but we'll see, we'll see. I'm sure you the know? ladies would love that. Yeah, they, they do. They, was, uh, they used to call me Chocolate Ecstasy back in the days. That's what they used to call me, so, you know, number 24. Number 24, brilliant. That's right, that's right. Thank you, Kofi Kingston. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right.